So, Professor Ravalion, you have been awarded the uh, Frontiers of Knowledge Award and the Development Cooperation category for your seminal work on, on the measurement of poverty and poverty line. What is the historical relevance and the practical importance of this type of research? Okay, um, if you, you look at the history of, of uh, thinking about poverty, one of the striking things is that, that quite often um, evidence Basically, somebody goes out and does a survey, they collect data, um, has, has been a powerful motivator for action. People learnt that how well-heeled people learnt how poor people lived, and that motivated action. Same idea here. This here was that to understand global poverty, so that people in rich countries, in poor countries, had a global perspective on poverty based on evidence. It would, the idea was that this would help motivate action. What is your view on this issue on, of development, uh, poverty and inequality and the relationship between these three very important processes? This is a, a long-standing debate in, in development. Um, some people traditionally, I guess you'd say 10 years ago, most economists would have said that um, there was a trade-off. If you, if you fought inequality, uh, you'd have higher poverty than you need in the society. And this idea of an aggregate growth equity trade-off has, has been very important in thinking. Um, I think the modern view, based a lot on evidence, including the work I've done, uh, does throw some doubt on that view. Um, there are certain circumstances where the trade-off exists and others where it's not important. Uh, historically, if you look at the countries that had uh, started off with low inequality, they tend to, tend to see higher rates of growth faster poverty reduction, it's not at all clear that, um, you, that there's a big trade-off. In other words, it's possible to have a more equal society and a less poor society at the same time. But equally well, you get it wrong in policy, you'll have a problem. It's very specific to the circumstances of each country. Are, are the poor of the, of the world left behind? Well, that's a, a good question. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, We've made enormous success at reducing the numbers of people living in extreme poverty. But we haven't had much success in raising the floor. Curiously, the, the lowest level of living in the world, it has risen at a very small rate. You know, about 0.4% per year is my estimate over the last 30 years. Whereas overall mean consumption has risen at about 2.4% per person per year. Now, you've got to understand, put that in perspective. That's not saying that we failed in poverty reduction. That's saying that we've reduced numbers of, of extremely poor people, but the, the level of living of the poorest has not responded much. Um, interestingly, in the rich world, when the rich world escaped poverty, in the, uh, from about the middle of the extreme poverty, from the middle of the 19th century to about the middle of the 20th century, the, the sort of extreme poverty we're talking about in poor countries today, um, when the rich world uh, escaped poverty, it seems that they raised the floor a bit faster than the developing world has been doing. So the developing world has been better at reducing numbers of poor, but less effective in reaching the very poorest. And I think I'm not sure, but I think that's a lot to do with differences in social policy.